All right, let's stand up and let's pray, get right into the Word of God this morning. I'm going to welcome all of you watching online as well. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are before you today. Thank you for this opportunity we've had to worship you and your wonderful anointing here. We thank you now as I come to teach that I do not have to depend on natural human abilities to teach, but I do trust in you, and therefore I know without doubt that you anoint my mind, that I might grasp the revelation that will rise in abundance from my heart within. Thank you for supernatural recall of the Scripture. And I believe that your word will flow from my mouth smoothly, accurately, and clearly, without hindrance from anything, carried by your anointing, your power, and your love to each person's mind. Bring understanding and remove confusion. Let your will enter every heart, bringing faith, dispelling every fear. And we'll be, giving, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory for all that's revealed and accomplished through your word and by your spirit here today. In Jesus' name, and all those who love Jesus said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Above all, taking our shield of faith. Say that. Above all, taking our shield of faith. All right, that's our title for this morning's message. Now, I don't know what challenges you are facing in life, but I know that you are facing a challenge. We all are. Uh, you know, somebody pray, said to me some, some time ago, Pastor Theo, won't you please pray that I won't have any more problems in life? So I said, sure, would you like me to pray that you die? <laughs> because if you're alive, <laughs> you can have a challenge or two. Right? Either you believe in God for something in your future, or you believe in God to overcome an obstacle, right? So all of us are facing challenges. Now, I don't know how severe your challenge might be this morning. I do know, though, that this message is going to help you overcome those challenges very much, very much. What we do not want to do is talk about our problems. We don't want to talk about our faults and our mistakes, because we all have those. We don't want to talk about our faults and our mistakes. We don't want to talk about our weaknesses. We don't want to talk about our sicknesses and our lack of finances. We don't want to talk about the challenges we face in life. I have tremendous responsibilities with 1,300 churches, A2 Bible schools around the world, and 30,000 members in Janusburg in this church right here. And so, um, but you'll never hear me talking about the challenges I face, unless I'm going to share a particular situation for a purpose of helping you and then showing you how we overcame it. Always on the positive side of sharing a story, even if it is a negative story, it'll end with a positive how we won in that situation. So, the point I'm making is we don't want to develop a lifestyle of talking negatively about all the challenges and things we deal with in life. Because remember what Jesus said in John 10, verse 10. He said, I am the way, the truth, and life. And he says, the devil, he said, I came to give you abundant life, sorry, and the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. I came to give you abundant life, and the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. So all those negative things are in that category of kill, steal, and destroy. So if I talk about all that, then I'm really glorifying the devil and his works. I'm testifying of what the devil's doing. Does that make sense? So we don't want to glorify the devil, right? And not only that, Jesus also said this in Mark eleven twenty three. 23. He said, Whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Whosoever, saved or unsaved, good or bad, whosoever, 
will have whatever they say if they believe what they say. So we've got to be careful what we say. And then God said in Numbers 14, 28, Moses, tell the people, as I live, says the Lord, just as they have spoken in my hearing, so I'll do to them. So what we say in the presence of God, and God is everywhere present, He can hear everything we say, we're going to have. It's a law. Just like gravity is a law. We set into motion things with our words that sometimes can't be reversed until we have a, a brainwashing session, have a mind renewed, and then start changing our confessions. Are you tracking me, church? So it's important not to talk about all these problems. So uh, from time to time, I'll tell you something that happened in my life that's not good, but I'll always give you a solution. This is how we overcame the problem. So there's a lesson to be learned. But you'll never hear me otherwise talking about the challenges I face. And I do have a lot of responsibility, a lot of opportunity for challenges. Amen. All right, so. And um, if we talk about all these problems, we're going to give the devil dominion over our lives. We're going to give him authority over our lives. Because it opens the door for the devil to attack us, just like it did with Job. Plus, this will fill our hearts with fear and rob us of our faith. Talking like that will fill our hearts with fear and rob us of our faith. It will also dry up the wisdom of God flowing into our hearts. It will stop flowing. We'll not be able to receive wisdom from God. We talk like that. No direction can come. Now, it's trending now among some preachers, and it's concerning me when I see one or two of them on TV talking about all their problems, their failings, their mistakes, their weaknesses, because they're telling the congregation, you see, I'm just like you. We're all the same. Don't worry. It's fine to be like that. It's fine to have all these failings in your life, because I have them too. What they're trying to do is win a popularity contest. But they get their congregation to go out and talk like that, even more so. And so now all the members of the church become controlled, influenced, and dominated by the devil and demons. Because they're speaking all these negative things into existence. That's a bad trend, family, a bad trend. I wish preachers would not do that. I wish they'd preach the Word. Amen? Preach faith into the hearts of people. People who talk like that don't realize they are saying that God is a failure. They're saying God is a failure when they talk all those negative things. Because they are saying that the Scriptures don't work. The Scriptures aren't true. That's what they're saying. For example, 1 Peter 2.24 says, By Jesus' stripes you were healed. So if I talk about all the sicknesses, my aches and pains, you stop somebody's street, how are you doing? And then half an hour later, you're still listening to all their problems. You wish you never asked them how they were doing. <laughs> you don't want to be rude and leave them standing there. But, you know, when you talk about all your sicknesses, aches, and pains, and God's telling you, hey, Fred, Mary, I healed you. 1 Peter 2.24, I healed you. By Jesus' stripes, you've been healed. When we talk like that, we know 1 Peter 2.24, we're saying it's not really true. 1 Peter 2.24 is not really true. The reality is my feelings. What I'm going through, I feel this way. My body feels. Feelings. This is how I feel. And my feelings are more real than the Word of God. 
I have more faith in my feelings than I do in 1 Peter 2.24. I have more faith in my feelings than I do in what God says. Are you tracking me, church? You see, when I talk like that, I'm saying that Philippians 4.19 is not true. God said, I meet all your needs according to my riches and glory. Instead of saying what God says, we talk about our lack of finances and our financial problems. And then we feel bad about it because we see the problem and we don't see Philippians 4.19. Then we're saying Philippians 4.19 is not true. God's saying, hey, I meet all your needs according to my riches and glory. I'm not dependent on earth's economy. God's not bound by earth's economy. God can change earth's economy, the whole thing, in a, in a moment. He's God. He stopped the moon and the, and the earth for Joshua, the sun and the sky, remember? God can change anything, anytime, if we'll believe Him. So when we talk like that, we are saying Philippians 4.19 doesn't work. God's not true to His Word. God failed. No, He doesn't fail. Those who make these negative confessions really have dropped their shield of faith. It's hanging down by their side. It's not working for them. They're holding on to it by their nails. So Apostle Theo, what am I going to do if I sin, make a mistake, mess up? What am I going to do then with my shield? Because I condemn myself, I feel so bad, I beat myself up for a week. Right. And when you do that, the devil's going to oblige you, and he's going to tell you how bad you are, what a rotten sinner you are, and you're never going to make it. You might as well give up now. <laughs> right? He's going to tell you. He's going he's to get on your case as well. You can count on that. People like that, they've dropped their shield of faith. They're hanging on by their nails. So what are you supposed to do then? Well, remember what God says in Hebrews 4.16. God said, come boldly to the throne of grace to find grace and mercy and help in your time of need. Which means when we mess up, we come to God for forgiveness and He will forgive us. And He says, be and you can be assured in the New Living Translation, of a glad welcome. You can be assured of a glad welcome. So even when we mess up, come for mercy and forgiveness and grace. Amen? And then, the Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. So glad that verse is in the Bible. <laughs> Aren't you? <laughs> How many of you ever needed that verse? Five of you. Okay, well, you might make a mistake somewhere. Don't worry about it in the future. Okay, so if you confess your sin, acknowledge it. He is faithful and just to forgive you. Faithful and just to forgive you. He didn't say he'll think about it. Right? And cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now once you've done that, instead of talking about all of your weaknesses, your temptations, your problems, and let your shield of faith drag again. Start confessing. Praise God, sin does not have dominion over me. Let me hear you say it. Sin shall not have dominion over me. Let me hear it again. Sin shall not have dominion over me. I live a godly life by the strength of God. And you can say this too. Second Corinthians. 5, 21 says, I am the righteousness 
of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Romans 3.22 says, Everybody who believes in Jesus has been given or made the righteousness of God. Are you a believer in Jesus? Say, so I'm a believer in Jesus. Therefore, I am the righteousness of God. Praise God. Now, you see, when you talk like that, you're going to develop a righteousness consciousness. And your faith will go to new heights because you understand it's by the grace of God that you are righteous and godly. That's what grace is. In my faith for today, I spoke a little bit about grace this week. Did you get it? Yes. Very important message. I hope you read those faith for todays. It takes a while to do them for you. And take you one minute to read it. It takes me a lot longer than that to make it. So I hope you appreciate my time. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. All right, so. When we confess the Word of God about our right standing with God, then we're going to create a righteousness consciousness, an awareness of God's grace that makes us innocent of sin and gives us right standing with Himself. And the devil will not be able to steal our faith. We're talking about renewing the mind in this area. See that? That's what we're doing right now. We're talking about last week's message. If you didn't hear it, you need to hear it. So, talking about our faults, our weaknesses, our sins, our mistakes, our temptations, talking about that all the time creates a sin consciousness. Sin consciousness. I become aware of my weaknesses and my sins I talk about, it, and I get on that, like that little rat going on that mouse, whatever it is, going on that wheel, you know. So you go round and round and round and round and round and round and, round and you get nowhere seasick or whatever. That's the only thing you're going to get. <laughs> so, don't talk about your failings and, feel and weaknesses. Don't do it. You make a mistake, you go to God with it. Well, the Bible says, Apostle Thea, confess your faults one to another. Doesn't it? Well, it's not talking about all your faults. It's talking about if I offend you, I go to you and I talk to you and I ask you to forgive me. Confess I made a mistake. But otherwise, my sin and mistakes don't have anything to do with you, and yours don't have anything to do with me. If I make a mistake, I'm going to go to God and tell Him I'm sorry. That's what matters. Amen? Amen. And I'm not going to talk about it to the devil anyway. Who is he to tell me I'm a sinner? Imagine the devil telling you you're a sinner. Like he's all good and innocent. That's messed up. The cheek of it. The cheek of it. All right. Now then. So, in the middle of your worst storm, in the middle of your worst storm, in the heat of the battle, that's the time to put up the shield of faith, brother. Put it up. Because the Bible says it will quench every fiery dart of the devil. Every attack, every problem. Your shield of faith will stop it. Will stop it. Ephesians 6.16. Ephesians 6.16. Look at that. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Above all, that means the shield of faith is the most important weapon in our armor. Ephesians 6, 16, Ephesians 6 talks about the armor of the believer. The armor of the believer. And the shield of faith, God said, is the most important piece of our armor. Most important piece. Above all, take your shield of faith with which you will be able, not might, quench all, not some, of the attacks of the devil. 
Say this, there's not a problem in life that my shield of faith can't neutralize. That's what God said. I didn't say it. Don't come to me and tell me you said that. I didn't say it. God said it. All right? Don't blame me for that. Now then, how do I use my shield of faith? All right, let's talk about that. How do I use it? Simply, I must find a scripture that promises to solve my problem and meditate on it. Meditate on it. I can prove that in the Bible. Psalm 107 verse 20. I'd like you to turn there. Psalm 107 verse 20. I can prove this to you from the Word of God. Psalm 107 verse 20. We get used to looking up at the screens. They're so convenient. But if you'll bring your Bible to church, I promise you now, you'll grow faster spiritually. Amen? You will grow faster. And you write in your Bible. If you write in your Bible, I've got several Bibles, and I write in all of them. I write in all of them. I love writing in my Bible. Say this. Dirty Bible. Clean Christian. Say clean Bible. Dirty Christian. <laughs> you see, I write in all my Bibles. The worst is Pastor Grady. If you see his Bible, it's a mess. Total dog's breakfast. You can't make heads or tails of it. Only he can understand what he's written in there. There's so much writing in there. But I guess he's a real clean Christian. Praise God. All right. <laughs> Where's Pastor Grady? Where is he? He's where? In the other building. Okay. Don't tell him I'm talking about him. <laughs> okay, now then, so, Psalm 107 verse 20, if you found it, if you haven't found it, you might as well give up and look at the person next to you. All right, <clears throat> I'm reading from the New King James. God sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So God sent His Word and healed them. All right, that means the Word of God is medicine. So that God sent His Word to heal us means God's Word is our medicine, supernatural medicine. He sent His Word to heal us and deliver us from our destructions or problems. So He sent His Word to heal us and deliver us, take care of all of our problems. He sent His Word. So how did God help us in life? He sent us His Word. Say this, everything I need from God will only come through His Word. All the help and wisdom I ever need from God, answers to prayer, will only come through His Word. Now, if that is why God sent His Word, then I need to find a scripture that meets my particular needs and meditate on that verse. Because my answer is in there. And that's called the Joshua Principle. That's called the Joshua Principle. I'd like you to open your Bible to Joshua 1.8. Let's study this. It's very powerful, very important, and very helpful. Very helpful. Joshua 1.8. New King James translation is the preferred one I'm using here now. Okay. You got it? Say, I've got it. Okay. All right, God says to Joshua, let me just set the stage for you. 
All right, so Moses dies, and God is looking for somebody to take over from Moses. Now, that's a very important pair of shoes to fill. So God comes to Joshua and says, I want you to take Moses' job. I want you to bring three million people into Canaan, the land of milk and honey. Moses is dead. Now it's your responsibility. And Joshua's thinking about, you know, all the things Moses did, like parting the Red Sea. And some of us find it a challenge to part our hair in the morning. But Moses parted the Red Sea. Now, my, imagine now your company director came to you and said, I'm leaving, I want you to take over this company. Maybe you just worked there. Maybe you're a salesperson or maybe you work as a bank clerk and now they come to you and say, I want you to take over the bank. You're going to be the director, principal, chairman, whatever. Somebody important. So that would be a big problem, big challenge in life. But taking Moses' job, that's huge. That's supernatural, Right? So God's going to help Joshua. He says, Joshua, I'm going to help you solve this problem for you. You're going to walk in Moses' shoes. How are we going to do that? Listen up. Joshua 1 8. Now God says, Joshua, this book of the law, my word, shall not depart from your mouth. Joshua, I want you to confess the word. I want you to confess the word. So that I've got to confess the word of God. I've got to speak the word of God. First principle. Secondly, you shall meditate in it day and night. So this, I must once in a while, once a week. No? So I must meditate in the Word of God continually, day and night. Amen. Why? Why? that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. So this, if I meditate in the Word, I become a doer of the Word. So this, if I'm not a doer of the Word, it's because I'm not meditating in the Word. So this, if I meditate in the Word, I will become a doer of the Word. And that's what God told Joshua. Now, that means if I meditate in scriptures like I spoke about, I am the righteous of God in Christ, sin shall not have dominion over me, then I'm going to start living a godly life. If I meditate in scriptures concerning Philippians 4.19, prosperity, and so on, then I'm going to start seeing finances come to me. And I'll start acting like I'm prosperous because I believe it now. And guess what? You become a money magnet. Is that a problem for you? Well, then you need to leave now. If you don't want to be a money magnet, leave now while you can. Escape, escape. I don't want to tell you how to prosper if you don't want it. But I believe all of God's children should be blessed. Thank you for those three holy amens. All right then. So if I meditate in the Word, I'm going to obey the Word. And then what's going to happen then? For then you will make your way prosperous. He didn't say, I'll make you prosperous. He says, you. See, God wants Joshua to prosper materially. So if you'll do this, Joshua, you'll start prospering. You'll make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So you'll have prosperity and success. How many of you want prosperity and success? Well, God gave us the Joshua principle. He didn't keep this a secret. Joshua, I'm telling you how to do this now, to follow Moses' footsteps, but I don't want you to tell anybody about it. You don't dare put that in the Bible because I don't want any Christians down the road to know about this. Why do you think God put that in the Bible? The Joshua principle for us, family. Amen?
for us. God wants us to succeed. Praise God. He wants us to succeed. If we succeed, then God's kingdom moves forward. Isn't that right? Say that. If I succeed, God's kingdom moves forward. Amen. Now then, you know, Joshua is so full of faith. Talk about parting the Red Sea. Okay. So Joshua became so full of faith. Why? Meditating in the Word. While they're out in battle, now they're going into Canaan, right? And they come to this tribe, nation, whatever they are. And uh, they have, they're at, at war. And so Joshua's winning the war with his, with his army, the Israel army. And the sun starts to go down. And Joshua says, I just need a few more hours and I'll wrap this up. But if the sun goes down, they're going to scatter and they're going to start all over again tomorrow morning. So this is not good. The sun needs to stay up in the sky. So he prays. He says, God, if it be thy will, let the sun stay in the sky. Is that what he said? No? Okay. He didn't. You're right about that. <laughs> he just said, sun, stand still in the sky. Moon, stop moving. And the, did the sun stand still? It was standing still all along. <laughs> The sun never moves. The earth stopped. The earth stopped. The moon stopped and the earth stopped. For about a whole day. For about a whole day. About 23 hours. So, that's what the Bible said. So, now you can imagine if the earth is turning a thousand miles an hour and suddenly it stops. You know, if you hit a brick wall at a thousand miles an hour, you might know about it. All those soldiers fighting did not even know that they had stopped moving a thousand miles an hour. Bang, just stopped. No birds knew it. No animals knew it. No one knew it. So God stopped the world and He protected everybody from falling over, dying, getting squashed, whatever. Because the earth stopped, they should keep going. Right? God took care of the whole thing. And you know what? When he said that, I can just imagine the Father and Jesus, the Holy Spirit in heaven. And Jesus says to the Father, you know what? We've been taken by surprise here. I never expected this. What are we going to do now? Let's have a meeting. And God says, I know. We, we could, we. Tell Joshua to rewind and take that statement back because we're not ready for this. Is that what happened? No. He didn't take God by surprise. He said, sun stands still, bang, it's just still. Now, I know we're making a lot of that to help us understand what God is capable of. All glory to God and what man's faith can achieve. The point is, family, all things are possible with our Father and all things are possible to him that believeth. You don't ever have to ask yourself if what I'm asking God to do is too big for God to do. When he says in Ephesians 3.20, that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. Is it true? It is true. So dare to believe God, and you will not ever be told, don't do that. God's never going to say that. So whatever your challenge might be, Find the scripture and meditate on it, the Joshua principle. Praise God. Whatever your problem is. For example, let's imagine now somebody has to make decisions in life. There's a major decision ahead of them, and you've got many options, and it's all confusing, and you have a serious problem, and you have to make a decision to solve the problem. The worst thing you can do is say, I don't know what to do. The worst thing, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? That's the worst thing you can say. You're just going to give the devil dominion over your thought life and confuse you even more. This is what we would say, write it down. I believe I understand God's plan to overcome this challenge. Say that, I believe I understand God's plan to overcome this challenge. 
Again, I believe, I understand God's plan to overcome this challenge. So now we're going to do this. We're going to give you, I'm going to give you four scriptures to deal with wisdom from God or direction from God. Write these down. And this, I'm giving you an example of believing God for wisdom as to believing God for anything that you might believe God for. You take a few scriptures, you write them down, you meditate on them and act on them. That's what we're going to do with God's wisdom as an example, as an example of what to do and how to do it in other areas as well. All right, first one is Romans 8, 27, the AT translation. Now, what's the AT translation? It's the Apostle Theo translation. Now, I read Romans 8, 26 and 27 for years and years and it never made sense to me. So I got to a place where I got so determined to understand it that I spent six months studying it. I looked at all the translations that I could find and read those two verses and never understood it. It was all confusing. So I went to the Greek and I got all the Greek words out and wrote them out. I wrote them out. And the English interpretation of each Greek word in that verse, because it was written in Greek originally. And here they are. You see the dark underlined words on the screen? Those are the Greek words. words. Search is in the Greek. Hearts is in the Greek. Know what the mind, know what the mind, the spirit, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God, according to God. That's the Greek. Where's the rest of that? Is it on the screen? You don't get the whole verse up there. Oh, there it is. So, um, I filled in the blanks, and they are in inverted commas, or in commas. Not inverted commas, in commas. We who, our praying in the Spirit of holy is, Holy Spirit. I put that in there to link those Greek words together. Where did I get that from? I studied all the scriptures in the Bible that have anything to do with God's guidance, Old and New Testament. And I put those words in there which now fit perfectly in harmony with all the other scriptures that deal with God's guidance. Now, when you read that, it makes perfect sense. All right, here we go. And it's in my book if you want to get the clear explanation how to pray successfully or how to pray and how to recognize the voice of God. Those two books have this whole detail in there. All right, here we go. We who search our hearts by praying in the Spirit. So that when I pray in tongues, my spirit is searching out wisdom from the Holy Spirit in my spirit. So your spirit and the Holy Spirit are one together in you. The Spirit of Christ and you are one. Now, when you pray in tongues, your spirit is communicating with the Holy Spirit. So we who search our hearts by praying in the Spirit know what the mind of the Holy Spirit is. We understand what the Holy Spirit's will is. We understand what the Holy Spirit's will is when we pray in tongues. Because the Holy Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Because the Holy Spirit's praying in me to bring about the will of God for me, which is blessing. Everything He paid for on the cross, the Holy Spirit's bringing into my life when I pray in tongues. But if I want to understand something, if I need the knowledge of God's will about something, I'm going to say this. Father, I ask you to show me what to do about this matter in Jesus' name. Therefore, now I believe I understand, thank you. Now I believe I understand your plan to overcome this challenge. Thank you. Now I'm going to pray in tongues, Holy Spirit. Let's pray in tongues about this. So we pray in the Spirit, and then I confess, praise God, stop praying, and I confess, praise God, I believe I understand God's plan to overcome this challenge. Then I pray some more in tongues, and I stop. And I say, praise God, I believe I understand how to overcome this challenge. I believe I understand God's plan. And I pray some more in tongues. 
Praise God, I believe I understand God's plan to overcome this challenge. So I pray in tongues again. Then I stop and I say, praise God, I believe I understand how to overcome this challenge. So what am I doing? I'm driving my spirit to seek out that knowledge by confessing it, and I'm using my faith. So I'm praying in the spirit and believing God by faith. If any man lacks wisdom, James 1, verse 4. If any man lacks wisdom, that's what we're talking about. Let him ask of God to give to all liberally, without teasing, that's what it means. And let him ask in faith, and it shall be given to him. There's got to be faith released. So that's what I'm doing. I'm confessing in faith. Praise God, I believe, I understand God's plan to overcome this challenge. Then I'm praying in tongues, and I'm using my faith again for that wisdom. You see that? Are you tracking me, church? Did I make that clear? All right, so now I'm going to give you three other scriptures quickly to confirm God's guidance. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Say that God always guides me on a road of victory and triumph. John 16, 13, Jesus said, however, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, and He will tell you things to come. So this, the Holy Spirit was sent by Jesus to guide me and tell me things to come, to tell me in the future. John 10, 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now I say this, Jesus said, I know how to recognize His voice, and that I do follow Him. Therefore, I confess, I know what to do. I know the Master's voice. I am following Him. Now, you see, family, confessing those Scriptures, like we just did now, you will start having God's direction in your life as clear as a bell, if you do that for a few days. As clear as a bell. There'll be no confusion. Don't ever say, I don't know what to do. By saying I don't know what to do, you're saying these scriptures don't work. God can't help me. The scriptures aren't true. They are true. The Joshua principle is meditate in these things. Read them. Think about it. Meditate on it. And confess it. And pray in the Spirit. And guess what? God will show you what to do. It will come up from your heart. From your spirit. A knowing. Oh, I know what to do. It'll come to you. Okay? Praise God. But by saying, I don't know what to do, what am I going to do now? The devil's going to confuse you even more. Don't let him do it. Hold fast to your confession of faith. Don't change your confession. God will come through. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering. Don't change what you say. Because he who promised is faithful. Say this, I must hold fast my confession of faith. Don't let it go because God is faithful. I can depend on Him. His Word is true. He's on my side. This is the Joshua principle. We can stop the sun in the sky. We can solve any problem that comes our way. Even it means to stop the sun and the moon. We can do it. We're allowed to do it shall I say. We're allowed to do it. Amen? All right. Did we come to church? Did we enjoy it? Did we learn anything? We'll give the Lord some praise in the house. Now I say this, God cannot do more for me than my confession of faith allows Him to do. And God will do anything for me if I believe Him, if I dare to believe Him. See, God doesn't love you more than He loves Joshua, or Joshua more than He loves you. He loves you both the same. God doesn't love anybody more than the other. God loves each one of us as much as He can love. God is love, and He loves you with all of His heart. He's not holding back any love from you, Right? God wants your success just like you want your children's success. More than that, more than that. Dare to believe Him, trust Him, confess in Him, have faith in Him. 
Amen? He's your father. He's your father. For all eternity, he's your father. Amen? All right. If you head back, if you are closed, all of you watching online, would you kindly please close your eyes, bow your heads. How many of you say today, Apostle Theo, I don't know where I'm going when I die. I need to be sure I'm going to heaven. I just don't know. I hope I go to heaven, but I just don't know. So while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I'm going to pray a little prayer, and God's going to speak to your heart and give you the assurance you need to confirm to your heart that you will go to heaven and not to hell, that you are His child and He loves you. If you want that confirmation, Invite Him to speak to you, and He will. I'm going to count to three. If you'll slip your hand up and take it down, that'll be an indication to God that you invite God to speak to you when I pray, and He will. So I'm going to count to three before I pray. Slip your hand up when I do. And that'll be God's sign that you want Him to speak to your heart this morning. Are you ready? One, two, three. Thank you. All of you watching online, you can slip your hands up and take them down. I invite everybody to say this prayer with me. Those watching online, watch all those here present now. Say this prayer with me today, together. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross in my place. You are punished for my sins so I can be forgiven. Please forgive me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come into my heart. Save my life. I declare you are my Lord and Savior. From this day on, I'll live for you with all of my heart till I see you face to face. Praise God, I'm saved, bound for heaven. Amen and amen.